Hello, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. Can you listen to me? Yes. Yes. How are you guys? I am tired. Tired, like me. Tired. Tired. Because it's Friday. <laughs> It's Friday and today is Friday and, and the body knows it. El viernes y el cuerpo lo sabe because we are tired. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, will you work tomorrow? In, in my case, no, but I need to do. What? Some errands. errands. How do you say? Mandado. Yes. Errands. Yes. You have to do some errands. Yes. Er, er, como, where, er, where er, is... Like errands. Er? E R R E N S. R R E R Yes. Yes. Like in Spanish. Uh, se escribe errands, errands, ah. pero como sabemos en inglés la R no existe, la pronunciamos como R, errands, so we er, say er, errands. Errands. Yes. Uh, uh, I guess we all are, are tired, but thank you for coming. Gracias por conectarse. Uh, this is the last class of the week. Then after this class, uh, we are going to have only two more on Monday and on Tuesday. So let's take advantage of the time. And let's uh, take advantage of the, the two last classes that we will have uh, la, uh, next week. So we are 10 participants. We are going to wait a little bit more. And how about the others? Are you working tomorrow? Van a trabajar mañana? No, I am free. It's tomorrow is my day yeah. off. I <clears throat> will be your day off. And would you work on Sunday? Do you work on Sundays? No. You don't work oh, no. on, on, on weekends. Uh, my, on weekends, yeah. So you work uh, Monday through, far, through Friday, Friday. Monday through Friday. Yes. Like yes, on, on weekdays. Only on weekdays. That's good uh, because you have two days off to rest and to do some more activities. And what yeah. are your, your plans, guys, for tomorrow? What you have plans for tomorrow? In my case, I am going to have at home every day, I think. You will be at home? Yes only watching TV, listening to music, maybe, yeah, it's okay. maybe chatting with your friends. Okay, that's good. In my case, I'm going to have a match, a soccer match in the afternoon with my nephew and, and his friend. So let's see how, how it goes. Okay, uh, we are 11 in, in total, so we are going to start the class, tonight class. And we are going to continue talking about quantifiers, a little bit slower, más pausado, so we can uh, get more uh, uh, the idea to understand better uh, how, how to use quantifiers and when to use with Countables and when to use with uncountable. 
So wow. yesterday we couldn't uh, see more examples, just the theory. But today we are going to uh, to be more slow, and we are going to analyze more examples. So let's pay attention, guys. Uh, see. There is a dog barking. There is a dog who is barking over there. Let's see. Uh, I'm going to share the presentation for today. So let's pay attention. Today is Friday, August uh, 13. And this is the class number 14. Two more to, to end the course. And tonight we are going to study quantifiers part two. Basically the same uh, information that we studied yesterday. It is a recalling previous knowledge. And what are quantifiers? <laughs> Do you remember in your words? Con sus palabras, do you remember what are quantifiers? What do we use quantifiers for? Use before known and to express quantify and can count and uncountable thing. Countables and, and uncountable use. We can use many forms to countable thing and much for uncountable thing. Okay. Uh, yeah. There are um, okay. all words that we can use when we don't have uh, the exactly one. We don't have the exact number. So in this exact case, number. we use quantifiers just to give an approximate of the quantity. For example, this, a little milk, a little money, is un aproximado. So these are quantifiers. And today we are going to analyze a little bit more about them. But before that, we are going to develop the exercise, something easy that is in the platform. I'm going to share um, my complete screen so I can go to the, to the platform. Can you see the platform? right now? Yes, teacher, we can. Okay. Uh, I guess you have already completed this exercise. So we are going just to double check. Let me see. Uh, is Sylvia here? Yes, I am. Can you read the, the I mean, the instructions, please. Read the following sentences. Select the response with the quantifier closest in meaning. In meaning, okay. Let's see number one. What is number one, Alma? Alma Geraldina. Mm. In China, how do you say 50%? Teacher? Uh, 50%. 50. 50%. Uh, 50% of women jeans uh, that marry by the uh, age of 22. 22, okay. In China, 50% of women get married by the age of 22. Look at this, 50 like the singer, 50, 50 cents. 
Like the rapper. Like the rapper. Como rapero, 50 cent. 50% 50, 50 in this case. Okay, in China, 50% of women get married by the age of 22. So let's see what is 50% in, in our table. Can you see the table? Yes. So we have in this, in this scale a lot of between 50 and 54 percent. So let's see. Do we have a lot of? Is the first mm -hmm. the first option? Mm -hmm. So let's check. Mm -hmm. In China, a lot of women get married by the age of 22. Because if you say few women, let's see what is few. 10%, 10% and in here it says a lot, 50% uh, means a lot, the half. So let's check in the number one. Number two, let's see. Manuel Orellana, can you read number two? Hello, Manuel. I guess he's not listening. Let's see who else. Uh, Alejandra Elizabeth, can yeah. you read? No. <laughs> okay. Yes, you. Okay. Go, go ahead, please. In Australia, 87% of married couples have children. In Australia, 87% of married couples have children. Okay. Uh, what is the 87%? Nearly all in Australia, in Australia, nearly all of married couples have children. Nearly all. Let's check in the table. Nearly all, eighty-six to ninety-nine percent. Nearly all. Casi todos. Okay. Good job. Nearly all. Nearly all. Number three. Who was the one who wanted to participate? In the United States, zero percent of the people, but before the age of eighteen. Okay. Yes. No one. Zero percent. That is an issue. In the United States, no one but before. Is that which number? One, two, or three. Uh, number three. Number three, because no one, zero percent. No one. No one. So we can say all people yeah. because is the totally different and few people. In this case, we don't have any 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 people. So we have zero. No one. No one votes before the age of uh, 18. Number four. 35% of the people in Germany live alone. And it's number one, some people in Germany live alone. 35% of people in Germany live alone. Some people, let's see what is the 35% in our table. 35% is between not many and some. So we can say that is some, because um, in this case shows in 40%. Some people, so we will see at the end. Number five. Uh, number five. Severina, Severina. 
percent percent of America high school student uh, how uh, respuesta sería la respuesta sería most American high school student high how how the number one number one so Person. 78% of American high school students have jobs. Or we can say most American high school students have jobs. Let's see what is the 78 in our table. Between 70 and 80, 85, most. So that is that will be the correct one. Let's submit. And logically, we have all of them correct because you have already studied these uh, quantifiers. So as you can see, it's what's very easy. And okay, thank you for the ones who share the answers. We are going to continue with the slide. Okay, here we are. And uh, let's see some examples about these quantifiers. I have this table with how much, I mean, much, many, and a lot of. It's the same, ta the same table that we studied yesterday. But in this case, I have uh, more examples. Can you please help me reading the examples? We have uh, much, many, and a lot. We use many with countable uh, nouns. We use much with uncountables. And a lot of can be used with countables and uncountables, can be used with uh, both. So for you to have clear the the concept, we have more examples. For example, the first one, there are many things to do today, many things. We can count the things, so we use many. Can you help me with the second one? We have a lot of, or a lot of time. We have a lot of time left, don't worry. We have a lot of time left, don't worry. Can you count the time? Yes. Can you count? Yes or not? Yes, we can. We measure the time, but we can count the time. Okay. Lo podemos medir but we cannot count it because we, we say uh, cuánto tiempo nos queda, decimos cuánto, how much. We don't say how many times do we have. Okay, so we use a lot of time, a lot of, a lot of. And the next one, many people, Teacher, a lot of time is uh, significa a lot of time. A lot of time, uh, mucho tiempo. We have a lot of time. We have un montón de tiempo. O bastante. Many people take the bus to work. Many people use, uh, we use many with countable now, so. We can count people, we use many. Next one. Much Salvadorian coffee is sold abroad. Much Salvadoran, Salvadoran coffee is sold abroad. Do you know what is abroad? I don't know. Abroad. No. Like when I ask you, have you ever been abroad? Have you ever been in another country? 
that is abroad in another country. So much Salvadoran coffee is sold abroad, abroad, es vendido afuera, eh, para otro país. We don't consume uh, the majority of the coffee here. La mayoría se vende afuera. So much, mucho. Next one. She plays a lot, a lot of, of sports. sports. A lot of sports. She plays a lot of sports. We don't say she plays many sports. Uh, even though we can count the sports, we can say many sports. I play many sports. Juego uh, varios deportes. But in this case, a lot of sports means that you dedicate uh, many time playing a sport, any sport. So look at this, when we want to emphasize a really big quantity, we can ask, we can add, so in front of many and much, for example, there were so many uh, passengers on the bus, so many. So we emphasize in the, in the quantity, so many. It was difficult to get up. Next one, we had so much work. Tenemos muchísimo trabajo to do. She stayed, well, she had, she had, ella tenía muchísimo. She stayed at the office until midnight. So, si quieren hacer más fuerte la expresión, en lugar de solo decir many, you use so many or so much, so much, so many. Okay, let's continue. Uh, quantifiers, a few, a little and a bit, a bit of. As you can see in the table, a few is used with countables, a few students. A little uh, is used with uncountable. A little water, a bit of a bit of salt, also so a bit. Is... Okay, continue. Tell me. Who had uh, a question? Okay, nobody. So here are some some. Examples, we need a few coins for the car park. A few, unas cuantas. So a few is countable. We need a few coins for the park, for the car park. And in this case, this is a question. Would you like a little milk in your coffee? A little milk in your coffee. Un poquito de miel, I mean, de, de leche. Would you like a little milk in your coffee? They ate a few biscuits with uh, their tea. They ate a few biscuits with their tea. Also we have, I feel a bit disappointed a bit disappointed, un poquito uh, desanimado, decepcionado, un poco decepcionado. Can you tell me some examples using these quantifiers? A few, a little, a bit. I want I want to hear your examples. I have a few pens. I have a few pens. Okay. We use them. We use it with countable nouns. 
So pens are countable nouns. Or if you don't want to I talk. I feel a big. I feel a big sad. You feel a bit sad, okay? Yes. This is an, an expression. A bit sad. If you don't want to talk, you can write in uh, the example in the chat. You can write any example. So I will uh, read it. I would like to drink a little water. It's okay. I would like to drink a little water. A little yes. Water. Yes, we, you can use it. Little water. Or you can say some water. What is the difference between a little and a big? A little and a bit. Um, the difference will be uh, not, not a big difference. Maybe the, is this, the percentage. Bit is smaller. Bit is smaller, yes. And a little will be a little, a little bit more. Sería como a poco y poquito. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Something similar. It depends on how you see the 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 amount the quantity but if you can see a bit can be used with uh, feelings a bit sad a bit disappointed a bit uh what else teacher yo tenía Observe. esa duda which one si la compañera acaba de usar little bit I Eso speak es correcto, a little bit of English. Yes, it's, it's correct. I feel a little bit hungry. I feel a little bit sleepy. Must come on with feelings that with nouns. Thanks. Okay, you're welcome. Okay, Sylvia says, I speak a little bit of English. Then Manuel de Jesus says, I need a few oranges. And I need a few oranges. Okay, who else? Okay, then we are going to see. Is someone more great? When we want to refer to a small quantity with a negative sense, we use few and little without a. For example, few students attended the class. Few students attended the class. A small number of students attended the class, which is a bad thing. En este caso no decimos a few students attended the class. Because we use that to refer to a negative uh, statement. Para referirnos a algo negativo. Few students. Pocos estudiantes vinieron a la clase. Which is not true because we are tonight 21. It's a, a big number. It's almost, it's the average of every day. Almost everybody is here. Uh, even though it's Friday. And that's good. So let's continue. We have some and any. We have some free time later this afternoon. We have some free time later this afternoon. So, do we use some with countable or uncountable now? Incountable. Or with both? We use it with both. 
with two. Because well, we, can, we can say some coffee and some students. Both. Yes, we use yes, it both. With, with both. Another example with some. You can uh, tell it to me or write it in the chat. I have some pets in my house. You have some pets in your house. Okay, that's nice. I have an example. Tell me your example. I have some idea for this class. You have some ideas for this class. And what are the ideas? What is an, an example? It's an example. <laughs> okay. But you have some examples as well. You have some. Okay. Next one. She doesn't want any coffee. Generalmente any lo usamos para cosas negativas. She doesn't want any coffee. I don't have any money. No tengo nada de the pistol doesn't have I well she doesn't want any coffee I don't have any money so we use any for uh, commonly for negative statements another example with any it's very common to say uh, do you have any question as well, even though it's not negative, because uh, normally we use any as well to to ask for questions. Like this example, do they need any help? Necesitan alguna ayuda? Any help? Or do you want any milk? Do you want any water? Some water? We can use any. Another example, let's see. I don't come to uh, to anymore. I don't come to anymore. What do you mean, Sandra? Or without the two, you, you can say, I don't come anymore. Ya no vengo. Quitándole the word to, you say, I don't come anymore. No me funciona la computer. Right? It's a, a preposition. Okay. Yeah. So in this case, you say, I don't come or I don't, we don't talk anymore like a song. We don't talk anymore. Ya no hablamos. Oh, in Spanish she, she means ya no vendré nunca más. So in this in that case is I won't come anymore because it's in the future. I won't. I will not come anymore. But you use any, so it's okay. Do it the quantifier. Then Alejandra Elizabeth says, I don't have any idea. She doesn't have any idea. Okay, good. We use some. Uh, we have another example. I went to some meetings in Rome last week. I went to some meetings in Rome last week. So we can use some with uh, countable or uncountable ones. Any other example with some, using some? Any other example, you can uh, type it I, in the chat. I'm going to eat some apple. Yeah. 
you are going to eat some apples. It's not true, it's example. <laughs> okay. So, or you can say, I'm going to eat some pupusas after the class. And that is another example. So anyone, anyone more with uh, another example using some? Okay, next one. Will there be any managers at the party? Any managers? As you can see, this is a question. So you, you use any. Any is commonly used in questions and for negative statements. I can say, I will type a, an example. Um, uh, last week I went to the beach. Uh, I I met some friends. Last week you went to the beach. Yes, I met some friends. Some friends. Okay, that's good. You you met in the past. Met some friends. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And here is an ex ex exception. As is common in English, there is an exception uh, to this rule. When you make requests and offers, you usually use some, some instead of any. For example, can I have some water, please? Or would you like some chocolate? You use some as well. This is a little exception because uh, it's some more uh, properly if you say some instead of any. Be because if you say, can I have any water? It doesn't sound very, uh, very properly. You say some water or some chocolate. Okay, this here is an example. It doesn't come any friend to the party. Okay, Manuel Loriana says that it doesn't come any friends to the party. Or you can say like this form, like this form. Any Any friends are coming to the party. Any friends are coming to the party, which means the same that Manuel was trying to tell us. And also, do you want some water or would you like some water more polite? Then Sulma says, can I have some lactose-free milk? Okay, that's good. My son doesn't like any kind of uh, medicine. Uh, children don't usually like medicines. So that is a common uh, fact that's happened to you. To, to parents. Okay, thank you for your examples. Let's check the other slide. Enough and plenty of. These uh, quantifiers means almost the same, but there is a little bit different because they both enough and plenty express the idea of being a sufficient quantity. Both words can be with, uh, can go with countable or uncountable nouns. 
we use plenty of to mean that there is more than a sufficient quantity or something. Plenty es usada cuando nos referimos que tenemos más de lo que necesitamos. Es más que suficiente. In this case, enough uh, means sufficient, uh, suficiente. No more, not less. Ni más ni menos. Suficiente, enough. And plenty of, we have plenty of time. Tenemos aún más de lo que necesitamos. We have plenty of time. So it's, it's even more. Plenty of is more than enough. Is that clear? Is that clear, guys? Yes, it's clear. Yes, it's clear. Yes. It's clear. yes. Ok, entonces, enough, a los salvadoreños podemos, podemos decir es cabalito. En plenty, podemos decir uh, más que suficiente. Ok, let's see some examples. For example, I need more plates. No, we don't. We don't need. There are plenty. There are plenty of plates. Hay más platos de los que necesitamos. So we, no, we don't need more. Next one. Slow down. We have got plenty of time to get, the, to, get to the station. No es tan rápido agarrar al suave así a los salvadoreños. We have, plenty, we have got plenty of time. Tenemos Tiempo de sobra para llegar a la, a la estación. We have plenty of time. And we use enough to express the idea of having, uh, having or not having a sufficient quantity. For example, I think we have enough uh, vegetables so I won't buy any more. We have enough vegetable. We don't need more as well. It's sufficient, sufficient. And also we can use it in a negative way, in una forma negativa. But we don't have enough fruit. Let's get some more. Hay un contraste aquí. En la primera oración, they have enough vegetable, suficientes vegetales. But in, in the second one, they don't have enough fruit. No les alcanza la, la fruta que tienen. They don't have enough, so they need more. So you, you can use enough for negative or positive things. Not enough or enough. Is that clear? Let's see yes. some, some examples. Yeah. I can hear some examples from you or I can, I, I want to, to read some examples. <clears throat> so tell me some examples you seen enough or plenty of or not enough? My family had plenty dogs in my house. Plenty of dogs? Or what? Yes. Plenty. Plenty of dogs. Because um, in this it case, eight dog. How many? Eight. <clears throat> Eight dogs. Yes. Okay, in this case, uh, it will sound a little bit, uh, a little bit weird. If you say plenty of dogs, you can use many dogs or too many, too many dogs. Sonaría mejor. Demasiados, too many dogs. 
Ajá, ejemplo. gramática. O uh, porque no se puede. Sí se puede. Gramáticamente uh, sí se puede. Y está bien estructur estructurada, pero lógicamente como que suena un poco fuera de, de, de la lógica. Porque eh, si dice... ¿Tenemos suficientes perros? Plenty no era of... más de lo suficiente. Uh, ¿Cuál me dijo Como el ejemplo? Tenía demasiados perros. Plenty. Uh, plenty of. In this case, ¿Sí? demasiado, uh, there is another quantifier. We use uh, too many or too much. Oh, too many thanks. or too much. Si nos referimos a plenty of, podemos referirnos a algo que necesitemos. Como por ejemplo, comida, tiempo, dinero, plenty of, plenty of time, plenty of money, plenty of food. Así lo podemos ver para algo que necesitemos. Pero para decir que algo es demasiado, podemos usar a too many or too much. Okay, uh, here is an example. I don't have enough time to study. Why don't you have enough time to study? Manuel. You said- That's, that, you said that. that's only, only one sample. <laughs> okay. Maybe you play too much video games. Do you play video no, games? No, I don't have time to do it. Ah, okay. <laughs> no, but by my work. Because of your work. Okay. It, it was just an, a comment. To use right. another example with quantifiers, that you may play too much video games or too much football. Ah, oh. okay. It's just Correct. to, to ex extend it, the example. I found then, simple. Yes. Okay. Tell me, Saul. Okay, um, I don't have enough money. Uh, the party going to be next week. Okay, because you don't have enough money, the party will uh, will be the next week. So that, that is a good example. Thank you. Uh, here in the chat, there are more examples. For example, Sulma says, this house is not big enough for all my family. This house is not big enough for all my family. Okay, is the house is is a small, so you need more Dice space. Enough, ¿qué significa? Enough, no lo comprendo bien. Enough, suficiente, sufficient. That is the meaning in Spanish, suficiente. Could you hear me? En salvadoreño era cabalito, dijo. Ajá, en <laughs> salvadorian. Por decirlo así. Enough. More examples. It's raining in San Miguel. It's great because uh, was not raining enough in these days. Was not raining enough in these days. So that is a good uh, a good news. That is raining in San Miguel. Because uh, I imagine that it was too hot the last few days. Okay, that's good. That is raining in San Miguel. Another example, I, I don't need more work. I have plenty. Okay, that is another good example uh, to use plenty. And as you can see with, this, with these examples, you say, I don't need more work. That is the noun, work. I have plenty. And you don't, you don't need to say, I have plenty of work. Because logically, we know 
that we refer to work to the work. So that is a good structure. Is uh, está bien escrito estructuralmente in grammar. I don't need more work. I have plenty. Or, or even you can use because because I have plenty. Another one. I have a question. Okay, tell me your questions. Uh, my question is about the the example. Uh, it's lockdown web gov uh, the bear the bear the base bear is to get and God is in part in the past it's loud down we have got this case is, is contrasted is contraído yeah. we, we have, have we have mm -hmm. got the bear get is in the past um Yes, en algunas uh, situaciones los americanos o los, uh, I would say, the native speakers of English, they use, I have got plenty of time. I have got, en vez de decir I have, lo usan como para sonar más, más fancy, más, in Spanish, that word means uh, más como más cool. Ajá, como más atractivo, más cool. We have got. Aunque si se puede decir I have, we have plenty of time. Pero comúnmente cuando se refieren al tiempo, I have got time. I have got time. So not necessarily is in the past, this expression, have got. No necesariamente está en, está en pasado. Sino que solo es una expresión común que ellos usan para referirse al tiempo. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you for your, your question. Uh, here is another, another example. You are, you are not good enough for me. Uh, that is why I'm leaving you. Oh my God, that is really a strong for someone to hear that. You are not good enough for me. Por eso lo va a dejar. That is very hard, Suma. And can we say plenty of health? Uh, Plenty of health. Let me see. Mm. No, in this case, I guess not. Because plenty, la, como le dijera, la, la salud, creo que no la podemos contar, verdad? O medir. It's more like a feeling. How are you feeling? Uh, in this case, you can say, you can say, uh, we have good health, buena salud, or excellent health, but plenty of health, I will say not. Porque no podemos como medir o contar la salud. That's why these are quantifiers. That do, uh, do we use for express a quantity or a number or an amount. Una cantidad, un nombre o una... Uh, valga la redundancia. Otra vez cantidad. So thank you for your examples. Uh, let's see the last slide. Uh, you can use question with quantifiers. And this is very important that you 
have to know how to make questions. Commonly we use how much or how many. Para no confundirnos. How much en español significa cuánto. Cuánto. How many, cuántos. En este caso, how much para not countable uh, nouns. And how many for countables. How much para cosas que no podemos contar. And how many para cosas que sí las podemos contar. And you can see cuánto en cuántos. Is, is different. Examples with how many. How many times have you, vis have you visited, visited Santa Ana? Okay, Brenda uh, raised her, her hand. Do you have a question, Brenda? Yes. Uh, when you say how much money do you spend a day? Quiere que le responda con un número. How Entonces much está money? ya contando o cómo. Vaya, ya les Porque voy a explicar pregunta... esa parte. Ajá. Ah. Bueno. Vaya, el dinero. Preguntamos, ¿cuánto dinero tienes? ¿Cuánto? As you can see, how much. How much money do you have? No decimos, ¿cuántos? How many money do you have? Because how many means ¿Cuántos? Entonces, para el dinero usamos how much, cuánto, cuánto dinero tiene, porque usted me puede decir, tengo cinco dólares. And which is okay, because you can count the, the coins, you can count the dollars, but not the money. That money is in general. El dinero en general no se puede contar. Puede contar las monedas, así como les dije ayer, las monedas o los billetes. Pero estructuralmente no podemos decir, eh, bueno, how much money, uh, how many money do you have? No se puede. Aunque sí podamos contar el dinero, pero la expresión correcta es, how much, cuánto, cuánto dinero tienes, porque si te... Just the, the... ok, uh -huh. dígame. Eh, teacher, pensaba yo que, eh, bueno, en este caso, tal vez cuando nosotros pensamos o escuchamos a un, a un gringo hablar español, ¿verdad? Es como si uh -huh. él dijera, ¿cuántos, cuántos dinero quieres? Uh -huh, uh -huh. <ríe> es como que nosotros estu estructuremos mal también una palabra de esta, ¿verdad? Exacto. Teacher, no, es que yo preguntaba si uh -huh. cuando a usted le preguntan en how much, so, entonces usted no va a contestar con un número, sino que usted va a contestar con many o much o con otro igual. O sea, no va a decirle un número. Sí, porque no le está pidiendo puede. un número. Sí puede también, porque para la respuesta puede decir, how much money do you have? I have 20 dollars. Tengo 20 dólares. Es un poco confuso, ¿verdad? Pero para, para hacer la pregunta es, ¿cuánto? No preguntamos, ¿cuántos? ¿Cuántos dineros tienes? Suena extraño, así como dijo Manuel. Porque si un gringo viniera y le dice, ¿cuántos dineros tienes? Usted se va a quedar así como, como pensando. Y se va a poner a reír, ¿verdad? Porque no se dice así. Entonces, la respuesta sí puede ser en números. How much money do you have? I have five dollars. Cinco dólares. Pero la pregunta es, no es how many money do you have? Sí le puede decir how many coins do you have? ¿Cuántas monedas tiene? ¿Cuántas monedas de dólar tiene? How many coins? Y en ese caso sí ya suena más, más lógico. No sé si respondí su pregunta. Hello, Brenda.
okay, uh, you have to be careful with this. Don't get confused. So just uh, pay attention to the rule because así, así fueron hechas las reglas para el inglés. Son dos idiomas diferentes, ¿verdad? Spanish and English are sometimes are similar, but in this case, we have to pay attention. Okay, more examples. Para ir terminando, how many people were at the meeting? How many drinks do we need? How many coins do you have? So as you can see, how many these nouns are countable? How many times, cuantas veces? Una o dos veces ha ido a Santa Ana. How many people were at the meeting? Uh, diez personas estuvieron en la reunión. How many drinks do we need? Necesito dos tragos. How many coins do you have? Tengo tres monedas. How much time do you got? How much time have you got? Aquí está también otra vez la expresión. Have you got? How much time have you got? How much bread does he eat? How much water shall I buy? Cuánta agua debo comprar? How much money do you spend a day? Cuánto dinero gasta al día? Okay, no sé si tienen alguna pregunta acerca de estos quantifiers. What's the mean water shall? How much water shall I buy? Shall Es como que esté diciendo should. How much water should I buy? Debería. How much water shall I buy? Shall means. Es como una. Como que está pidiendo una recomendación. Como decir debería comprar. ¿Cuánta agua debo comprar? And es like wool. Light like wool? No. Should. Quítale la A y póngale la O y la U y agréguele una D. Should. Que es debería. Por ejemplo, should I go to, to a party today? Debería ir a una fiesta ahora. Should I buy a car? Debería comprar un carro. Is another topic. Okay, one more in the chat is like this. Should. Should. Okay, guys, it's 9 p.m., 9, 2 o'clock, 9, 9, 2. So we are going to stop here. Ah, solo para terminar. También usamos how much cuando queremos preguntar el precio de algo. How much uh, do this melon cost? How much does this sofa cost? How much are those gloves? ¿Cuánto cuestan esos guantes? ¿Cuánto cuesta este sofá? ¿Cuánto cuestan estos melones? How much para preguntar precios. ¿Cuánto? And if you don't have any questions, we are going to stop here. Um, if you want to review some of these topics, you can tell me. Porque acuérdense que el lunes vamos a hacer un, un review general de los temas que vimos en la plataforma. Todavía tenemos dos días más para hacerlo. So if you don't have any questions, we are going to stop here. Thank you for coming. Thank you for your time. Gracias por venir. Aunque sea viernes. Es un sacrificio que estamos haciendo. Espero que les va a servir. Espero que les sirva. Así que gracias a todos por haber venido por haber sido responsable thank you for this class it was very interesting okay thank you for your comments 
I appreciate it. See you and have a good night. Have a good night and have a good night, teacher. Good night, teacher. See you on Monday. Thank you. Good evening. Good night. Thank you. Happy Friday. Thank you. Happy Friday, too. Good evening. Thank you.